Hey everyone, welcome back to Alps Mustang Garage, bringing you another video to help keep your Mustang on the road and out of the garage. Today, we're back on the 67 convertible. Uh, I've been doing a series of videos here on this, doing some basic kind of tuning up of this engine and getting it to run right. Um, so today, what we're going to do is we're gonna swap out the old ignition breaker points. So if you're familiar with these, um, breaker points are very easy to do. They also wear out very quickly. So what we're gonna do is upgrade it to the Petronix electronic ignition system. Okay, so what you're going to see in this video, um, you're not gonna see me just remove the breaker points and install this, which in itself is relatively easy. Um, I'm gonna take you through the breakdown on how to make sure that this is set up correctly. There are instructions. You need to make sure uh, your resistance values for your ignition wire and coil are within the specifications in order to run this. Um, I'm gonna show you how to check that, show you how to hook this up, um, how to adjust it, gap it correctly. Um, when done properly, these things will work great. I've had one in one of my personal cars that you guys don't see a lot of, um, and it's been in there for like 15 years, and I've never had a problem with it. Okay, very first step before you begin anything is read your instructions. Like, there's a lot of things you need to be aware of when you install these units. Uh, nothing crazy, um, and I understand people can get kind of overwhelmed with electrical because it's not everybody's strong suit, but you gotta read these and understand this if you want this system to work properly and want it to last. Okay, so the very first thing, um, Obviously, it's going to be a 12 volt negative ground, which is all your classic Mustangs with alternators. Um, so very first thing is do not use with solid core spark plug wires. Um, RFI suppression spark plug wires must be used, which I think pretty much every, anything nowadays is a suppression, RFI suppression, which it's actually labeled on these wires. So we are good there. So there's a, a, a resistance specification, okay? Eight cylinder, eight cylinder engines require a minimum of 1.5 ohms. That's what we use to measure resistance uh, between one point and another. Um, four and six cylinder engines get a you know minimum of three ohms of primary resistance in the ignition circuit. Okay, I'll explain more of that later. Okay, um, that tells you how to install it. Um, and here's kind of our resistance specifications. Whether you're doing a you know, six cylinder engine or an eight cylinder and up engine. So you need to have your resistance values within, you know, uh, on an eight cylinder, 1.5 to 3.5 ohms of resistance. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to test because these, uh, these Mustangs from the factory came with a resistance wire on their ignition circuit. So let me show you on the wiring diagram. Okay, so if you own a classic Mustang and you like to work on stuff yourself, this is like a must have highly recommended tool. Um, I have one for you know most years. You can get these from classiccarwiring.com. There's their phone number. This is the most detailed, uh, accurate wiring schematic I have found and it makes it really, really easy to follow. So, primary ex primary resistance on your on your ignition circuit is going to consist of your coil plus the wire that feeds it. Okay. So if you follow that wire, we're going to go all the way to your ignition switch, uh, which is this pink wire right here. And we'll follow that along, and there is the resistance wire that I'm talking about, okay? These cars will have about 
1.5 ohms. Now, I don't necessarily trust that that is still intact. People sometimes will bypass this stuff for whatever reason. I don't know, these cars are too old. They've had too many hands playing with this stuff and too many hands in the cookie jar. So we need to test this to kind of verify we're still running the factor of resistance wire, that it still has you know the 1.5 ohms, which it should have. And then we'll test the uh, primary resistance in the coil. We'll add those together and make sure that this is gonna work for what we're trying to do. Okay, so before you do anything with testing or replacing, disconnect your battery. Okay, so before we install the actual Petronics unit into the distributor, what I like to do is test my system to see if we're gonna meet uh, the, the required resistance specifications you know, to run this coil that, we're, that we have. Now you can get the Petronics coil or you can use your existing coil. Um, it shouldn't really matter as long as you have the correct uh, resistance specifications within your circuit. So let me show you what I do to test this and make sure that we're going to be good. In an effort to clear up some confusion, because uh, I understand that, you know, if you're doing this for the first time, um, it may be a little confusing, but it will tell you about, you know, the, the vehicles that come with a factory uh, ballast resistor or resistance wire, which this car uh, should have a resistance wire. So it, it'll tell you that they recommend to remove all external resistance, okay? And that's one way to do it, but you don't necessarily have to do that. It gives you a chart of primary resistance specifications. Now your primary resistance is gonna be the resistance of the coil itself, plus any additional external resistance in your ignition wire. So the total should be between 1.5 and 3.5 ohms of resistance. So if your coil is a 1.5 ohm or, you know, two ohm, you know, in this range, then, you know, you don't want any more resistance in your system, okay? But if it's under 1.5 ohms, and guess what? You're probably gonna wanna keep the factory resistance wire to bring the resistance into this range. And that is what matters the most, is that you're in this operating range um, and not necessarily getting the full brunt of voltage of this and you're, you don't have enough resistance in your coil, that's how you're gonna burn up units and, and blow up coils and stuff. So, so hopefully that kind of clears up some confusion. I understand you kind of flip over to the next page and it kind of has a couple, you know, conflicting images. Um, but I just like to go off the chart and you will never go wrong as long as you are in this specification. Okay, so first thing to do, I got my digital volt ohm meter set to ohms. If you're new to using this and new to testing resistance, I like to zero out my test leads, clamp them together. You should see zero resistance in your leads. And then you're going to test from one point of the coil to the other. So negative to positive. It does not matter which leads go where because you're simply testing from one point of a nut to another. Now we are reading 1.2 ohms on this coil, which means we are under the minimum of 1.5 for the primary resistance circuit. So we are going to want to run the original resistance wire on this car. So with 1.2 ohms, let's now show you how I test the resistance wire to number one, make sure it's still intact because this is a 50 year old plus car and we don't really know the history. I find most of these cars, people have kind of, you know, hacked up and altered and it may not necessarily be the way it was from original factory specs. So let's show you how to test for the resistance wire and see what that is. Now I'm gonna go one test lead 
on my wire that goes to the positive side of the coil. That's your ignition wire. The other one of these, you can either run a test lead all the way to the back of the ignition switch, which is a little more difficult to access, or you can put this right on the positive battery cable. So I'm connected on the positive battery. Does not matter which test lead. I'm also connected on the ignition wire that goes to the positive side of the coil. Okay, so for this test, key has to be in the on position. And I'm getting a value of 1.3 ohms. That tells me the vehicle still has a factory resistance wire. We're still using it and it's still within specifications because the specifications on this is 1.3 to 1.4 ohms. Okay, so we have our coil was 1.2 plus the 1.3 equals 2.5 ohms. Okay, so we are right in there. Okay, we want, we want to be at 1.5 to 3.5 for an eight cylinder engine. If you add those together, you're at 2.5. So we're good. We don't need to add any relays. We don't need to bypass the factory ignition wire. Um, with this coil and this setup, this will work perfect. Okay, you want another way to test this? Instead of doing two independent tests and then adding the numbers together? Well, connect your ignition wire to your positive side of the coil. Put your test lead on the negative side of the coil. Put your other test lead on the positive side of the battery. Turn your key in the on position and you're gonna get the total resistance value of the entire circuit. So you have the coil, you're reading the coil's resistance because you're going through the coil and up to the negative side of the post. You're reading all that resistance all the way through and the total is reading 2.6. There you go. You're right in the value, so you're fine. Now we just gotta install the actual Petronics unit, connect the wires, and this thing will be good to fire up. Okay, so you got a flathead screw right here. And you got a flathead screw right here. This little ground strap will stay. And you got a flathead screw right here. If you want to just keep the whole thing attached, you can actually just kind of push this rubber grommet through like that. And you can pull this whole wire through. This is the wire that goes to the negative side of the coil. You can fish that out like that. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is just kind of feed your wire through. You're going to have two wires now. Feed that through the hole in the distributor. It's got a little grommet. So you'll kind of make sure that's seated nice. Like that. This is going to mount just like your points. It has to be gapped just like your points. Okay. Now it's got little it's got little alignment dowels on here. They're kind of small, but it kind of helps put it into place. That little alignment dowel right there is going to go into a little hole right here. Okay, so it takes just kind of a little bit of sliding around before you kind of feel it kind of go into its little uh, notch. And so once it's in there, you can pivot the end just like your, you know, mechanical breaker points will. So, and this end up here should be pretty fixed like it's not going to slide it's going to pivot on this end and that's so we can set the alignment but we're going to get a screw in here 
with the little ground. There's that original ground strap. We're gonna put a screw through that. Okay, so I moved the wires out of the way just so you can see this a little better. And your hardware kit that comes with your Petronics unit comes with a new little screw here. So I'm probably gonna use that. Okay, the next part is gonna go over your distributor's cam, which that cam acted as the, uh, you know, mechanical portion to, you know, open up your breaker points. Now we're just gonna slide this over there, which kinda acts as your, you know, this is kinda like a magnetic pickup. Um, as this turns around, it's gonna act as the trigger mechanism for your unit here. It's got to have a way to trigger it. That's how all this stuff kind of works. Uh, you know, when it triggers, it's going to fire your coil. So, so now that that's on there, the kit comes with this little gapping tool. And you're going to slide that in. Like that. Just until you have a slight amount of play. Lock down your set screw. And that's it. That should be all there is to that. Now we just gotta get everything wired up. Now that you have this installed and you got your wires through the hole here in the distributor, you wanna kinda pull some of these through. You don't want this to because um, this unit is going to be spinning around as your engine's turning. So you don't, you want some slack here in these wires, so we're not going to get caught up in all that. You can put your ignition rotor back on. So now we have your, your red and your black wire coming off your Petronics igniter. These two go to your coil. The red one goes to the positive side of the coil, and the black one goes to the negative side of the coil. Pay attention to the symbols. They are stamped on the coil. So um, I got quite a bit of wire here, so I'm just gonna shorten these down with the way I routed it. They give you plenty of wire to uh, make your connection wherever it is your coil is mounted. So I'm just gonna cut those. And splice them. Your kit will come with uh, new connect, little new connectors like this. one to negative, red one to positive, and that's how you wire the igniter unit. We're still going to run our ignition feed from the ignition key. Okay, ignition wire goes to positive. Petronics unit red goes to positive. Petronics unit black goes to negative. I found that the nuts that came in the kit did not fit my specific coil. So I had to go track down the right nuts, so just kind of watch out for that. If it doesn't spin on nice and smooth by hand, then it's wrong. Okay, I think we're ready to fire this up. <clears throat> um, everything's all installed. Um, we verified the resistance on the circuit, including the coil, is the correct amount of resistance it's within the specifications so essentially on, on this particular car it's just a bolt-in you know ready to go without any modifications but you want to definitely take your time and uh, make sure that um, you know everything is is good within the parameters you know as far as resistance goes so anyways yeah let's fire this sucker up
Okay, my friends, well, that's uh, how you upgrade uh, to your Petronics electronic ignition. Um, definitely the product that I recommend for, you know, the, the quickest, the easiest, the fastest, the most reliable as well. I've had one of these in, in a car for over 15 years and I've never had to do anything with it. So um, they, they definitely last as long as you do it correctly. Um, check your resistance, um, do all that stuff and yeah, she should be good. But anyways, thanks for watching. Appreciate it as always. And, um, you know, we'll catch you on the next go around. And uh, as always, we're here to help keep your Mustang on the road and out of the garage.